Dear students, today we will study the family Liliaceae, which is the first family coming under monocotyledons. So, when you are studying about this Bentham and Fuchs classification, that is uh, the monocots or monocotyledons are coming under the third class of Bentham and Fuchs classification. First class it is dicotyledons, second class it is gymnospermae, and third class it is monocotyledons. And according to Bentham and Hooker, Hooker's classification, they divide this third class that is monocotyledons into uh, seven series and altogether 34 families. That uh, series just uh, uh, um, along with a small introduction about this classification, that is the seven series includes microspermae, epigynae, coronariae, calicinae, nudiflorae, Apocarpe and Glomeraceae. And, and in the third series, that is Coronaria, is with this Liliaceae family. Okay, so directly uh, we will study the systematic position once again. That is, this particular family is coming under Monocotyledon and series Coronaria and family Liliaceae. So, like that of our previous classes, first we will discuss about this. Uh, vegetative characters then uh, we will study about the floral characters and uh, uh, coming to its habitat that is uh, in this family suppose we are studying in deep or depth we can see mostly herbs are common mostly herbaceous plants we can see which are with the fibrous roots uh, persisting from season by sea, uh, season by means of its underground stem or uh, rhizome okay so here also we can see one example here it is written that is asphodilus asphodilus we can see this is this one is the asphodilus and it is not very common to our area but it is with the beautiful liliaceae family members showing beautiful um, flowers <clears throat> and some of them are uh, very common to our area that is for example aloe that is Katarvara, aloe vera, that is which is permeating by rhizome. So, here we can see this aloe with the flowering. Okay. And uh, then uh, see this even this medicinal plant, the aloe is with the beautiful flowers. And then uh, lilium, that is the lily. Uh, and the tulipa, that is tulips. Here we can see this tulipa. Common name it is tulips, tulip. Uh, then allium, allium of course it is not with the very showy flowers but uh, suppose we are watching this um, onion uh, or allium um, flowers, allium means onion species, onion genus and suppose we are watching the onion flowers through a decision microscope, we can see very small flowers which are appearing as clusters and that too these flowers are very beautiful but it is small sized. Okay. And uh, uh, surprisingly, uh, that uh, tree species uh, uh, species is also found in this um, family. That is normally um, um, that a secondary development uh, uh, or secondary development of tissues is not found in the monocots because its vascular bundles are closed and collateral. <clears throat> so there is no chance of developing secondary tissues. But this particular species uh, that is Dracaena, hmm? Dracaena, see that spelling D-R-A-C-A-E-N-A, Dracaena and it is with uh, some abnormal characteristics that is it is able to do some sort of secondary development. Okay, so that is why tree species that is Dracaena, then climbers that is asparagus, milax, like that. Asparagus means shadavari. And some of them are showing xerophytic adaptations like yucca, then aloe. Aloe is, see this photograph and that area is, we can see this is just naturally growing and it is very dry, dry area. And it is not in need of any water um, uh, larger conditions that's why it is able to keep water content in the form of mucus okay then uh, clad oats uh, we can see in asparagus and ruscus um, uh, philoclades 
uh, actually ruscus is with the philoclite and uh, asparagus that is a cloud out condition is it is in the form of scale leaves it appears as scale leaves okay so these are the some of the interesting factors related to its vegetative characteristics that is we can see wide varieties of plants which are uh, many of them are herbaceous and many of them produce rhizomes and tree species is uh, surprisingly is there then climbers erophytic plants and philoclads and cladodes are there and like that okay and this is the lilium this is a type specimen uh, of this family normal common lily and this is the normal dracaena there are so many species sir this is a very common dracaena found to near our area and here it is sadaveri that is asparagus and this is the famous uh, dracaena species that is dracaena draco see this this land is like a um, uh, that a, our prehistoric times it is resembling like that see can you imagine a dinosaur just below to that okay that is this uh, um, dracaena draco its name okay here in our area also dracaena draco is there yeah? but it is actually introduced and uh, cultivated uh, as an ornamental tree and in ooty botanical garden uh, its red variety is there if you are visiting the ooty botanical gardens in the near to that uh, central part of the um, botanical garden um, near to that uh, uh, lawn area you can see th uh, three to uh, i think it's a small cluster of seven dracaena draco trees are there okay that is in red color okay and here it is the smilax and uh, here we can see this ruscus Sarka, uh, ruscus here we can see the leaves are emerging from the leaves it is not leaves it is uh, that uh, philoclide that is modification of stem like a leaf that's why the uh, flowers are emerging from that it is actually stem okay ruscus so these are the different kinds of this Uh, coming to uh, next part that is about this root uh, it is monocot family so fibrous uh, root system uh, sometimes this uh, fibrous uh, sometimes adventitious root system and sometimes tuberous here the tuberous example is the asparagus root uh, this root is with a um, medicinal property and also uh, this root is used to, to make pickles medicinal value uh is there so this pickle is cost uh or it gives an economical benefit to the farmers okay and this roots are used to, to make pickles and uh, coming to stem that is normally herbaceous stem or sometimes woody uh, in case of this dracaena it is little bit woody and solid sometimes hollow that is fistular then underground uh, stem is a common factor then aerial climbing or erect underground stem stem may be a comb okay bulb or rhizome so in ruscus and asparagus aerial stems bear philoclades that is modified leaf branches if like branches comb is for example colchicum uh, secondary Uh, growth in uh, uh, secondary growth found in yucca and dracaena and uh, very rarely aloe is also with the secondary development and here we can see this comb uh, that is the modified underground stem that's why in this colchicum species from this comb the um, flowers are emerging because this is it is not root it is part of the stem so normally it is the occurring uh, occurrence of these flowers are a normal normal factor because flowers are developing from branches or stem part of the stem that's why this uh, particular colchicum is with this uh, um, underground stem modification that is the comb here it is not is here that is uh, what is a comb a comb is relative, relatively solid modified stem that has a few fleshy leaves then the node is the point where the leaf attaches to the stem 
the presence of nodes and inner nodes makes the comb a modified step so that's why flowers then phyllode is a modified petiole but phyllo what is a phylloclide by contrast it is a modified step that is responsible for photosynthesis that is why from the rusker that is ruscus the flowers are emerging from the flattened stem that is phylloclide okay here this yucca yucca is also like a drac uh, dracaena draco somewhat but the uh, leaf is different okay then coming to leaves leaves are normally uh, alternate opposite or world radical and colloid extipulate and uh, sessile or petiolate uh, sheathing leaf bases sometimes present that is in case of dracaena we can see this sheathing leaf bases and shape is very vari variable like a scale like that is in asparagus here we can see this very minute needle shaped uh, leaves thick succulent and mucilaginous in arrow then broad in uh, formium tenax in smilax a specialty is there that is the stipulate the stipules are modified into tendrils okay then venation is usually parallel for monocot families but in case of this uh, smilax and uh, trillium uh, we can see reticulate venation here that is this is trillium here we can see this uh, reticulate venation but it's actually the member of liliaceae but uh, the rest of the characters are um, very much similar to that of the other members of the liliaceae otherwise suppose anybody is viewing uh, first to recognize this plant uh, which is from dicots okay and uh, like that this plant smilax here here also we can see this smilax is with the uh, reticulate venation okay and the here this rascus it is phylloclade that's why from the center of the leaf like a phylloclade we can see the flowers are emerging okay then here we can see this erophytic plant uh, that is aloe vera it is uh, with the, this mucilaginous um, mucus so it is able to lodge or hold water content then the leaves are very broad in case of this uh, particular species that is formium tenax okay these are the specialities of leaves then directly we will study the floral characteristics first we will study about inflorescence that is the in case of inflorescence also we can see some variations that is in solitary condition paniculated racemes are there then cymose umbel and solitary axillary flowers are there these are the variations here this uh, solitary flowers very beautiful flowers that is fritil area and it is not common for our uh, area but in colder climatic condition we can see this plant then here this um, asphodelus and alia here this asphod asphodelus it is racemose in fluorescence and in here this is the close of view of onion leaf flowers and it is see this single flower it is very beautiful white flowers okay and these flowers are flowers and the um, uh, onion leaves are used as vegetables and this it is um, uh, cymos umbels then uh, we can see this particular beautiful flower it's solitary flower with a with a terminal flowers okay and uh, it is gloriosa species name is gloriosa superba it's very common in our area this flower is considered as flower of tamil nadu okay like that of our state's flower uh, cashew fistula like that this gloriosa superba is the flower of tamil nadu okay and here one bud is there see this beautiful flower with brilliant colors okay so it's very common in uh, tiruvannadavara and next we will study about the floral characteristics of individual flowers in fluorescence is over then flowers are not very um, extraordinary characteristics 
that is it is pedicellate flower actinomorphic or rarely zygomorphic in case of lilium and hemerocallus then bisexual or hermaphrodite or sometimes unisexual in spilax and uh, ruscus hypogynous flowers complete or rarely incomplete uh, that is in case of unisexual flowers then trimeres rarely two or four meres okay and this is some examples of these flowers that is hemerocallus then it is that uh, mayanthinamum then it is the smilax flower okay and uh, coming to individual characteristics individual floral character floral structures here there is no petal and uh, sepal you know, organization it is perianth perianth normally six in two worlds that is three each here we can see this perianth okay inner three outer three and that's why um, uh, that is the term polyphyllous polypetalous in here it is perianth so it is called as polyphyllous that is it is not united this example is lilium and tulipa or gamophyllous that is fused this is the aloe flower and here we can see this perianth uh, here also 6 plus 6 arrange uh, 2 3 plus 3 arrangement but it is fused that's why it is called gamophyllous in case of normal flowers it is called a gamopetalus here it is perian so it is called a gamophyllus and of various shapes that is petaloid or sepaloid imbricate in bud condition usually valvate in situation and then perian may be uh, scarious or membranous scarious means thick uh, membranous and we can see wide varieties are there then coming to this, um, this is a ruscus leaf, Sar uh, it is not leaf, ruscus modification, modified step, okay, mm, philoclite. Then coming to andrisium, the stamen 6 or 3, 3 in, in ruscus, polyandrus, then epiphyllus, uh, not epipetalus, it is epiphyllus, andiphyllus, it was one side. Filaments long and thus versatile. Versatile means swinging type and thus. Or basic fixed, dithecus, in rows or extros. In ruscus, outer wall of stamen is reduced to staminodes. But it is not very clear. Here we can see one staminode is there, the thick, flattened structures. Okay. Then coming to gynesium, tricarpillary, syncarpus ovary, superior or half inferior. Here in this figure, you can see it is superior. See this tricarpillary condition, there is three, two are visible, one is the in other side. Okay, this is the, here we can see, very well see the stamen condition. It is versatile because it is not basically fixed. It is uh, present at the back of the uh, anther, so the anther is able to move um, left to right. So it is swing, swinging type. Okay. Mm, two, two ovules, axial placentation, style symbol, uh, stigma trilobed. Here we can see this trilobed condition. So two lobes here, one lobe is the other side, the other side. Um, and uh, stigma trilobed or three part. Okay, that is about the gynecium of Liliaceae. Then coming to fruit, fruit uh, generally uh, there are uh, um, two types generally that is a berry and capsule. Here the asparagus that is sadaveri can see in some um, near to this uh, summer season we can see it is flowering and also fruiting and it is a perfect berry. It is not edible. Then Asphodilus, here we can see this, it is a capsule and uh, young condition, it is capsule is green in color and in matured dried condition split apart. See this, that is the two, is a capsule type of fruit and seed, uh, it is actually onion seeds, it is also used as a spice, uh, endospermic, endosperm is horny or cartilaginous, thick, tough, 
okay then pollination it is uh, showy flowers means there we can expect the pollination is endomophilus this is a floral formula that is um, actinomorphic bisexual perianth 3 plus 3 uh, that is 3 plus 3 plus 3 it is free that is epi, epiphyllus and then um, 3 plus 3 fused that is epigamous then andrisium also and thus 3 plus 3 gynesium 3 tricarpillary condition and superior okay and from this we can see this diagnostic or general characters of liliaceae Herbs uh, rarely shrub stem underground rhizome, comb or bulb, leaves alternate normally, flowers actinomorphic, trimerous, hypogenous, perianth 6 in 2 words, 3 each, free or fused, stamens 3 plus 3, epiphyllus, antiphyllus, gynesium tricarpillary, syncarpus, ovary superior, axial placentation, 2 or many ovules per globules, fruit capsule or berry, seed endospermy. Okay, can you able to remember this? And uh, now, uh, please understand the family and study the diagnostic uh, or identification distinguishable characters last. Okay. Then coming to economic importance, that is of course it is um, food, that is Elium sipa onion, Elium sativum, that is garlic, asparagus, um, they are edible as food. Then medicinal properties are there, the Smilax, aloe, uh, aloe Gloriosa, uh, Veratrum, Colchicum, Skyla and uh, Arginia uh, is used as drugs. Rat poison is obtained from Arginia and the bulbs of Skyla. Aloe vera uh, is with uh, the alkaloid aloein and uh, which is very useful in um, cosmetic industry and also soothening uh, in soothening for the preparation of uh, soothening materials uh, then al then also it uh, it is able to use in this uh, some skin diseases against the skin diseases the roots of asparagus yields a tonic uh, then from colchicum colchicin is obtained uh, colchicin is a mutagen okay colchicum atom nail the species name and uh, here we can see this figures this is allium sipa then uh, that uh, garlic is there that is allium sativa that this is the sky skyla okay somewhat poison content some poison content is there in skyla then here we can see this uh, arginia here also it is we can see the comb from this comb the uh, leaves are emerging okay so when usually this comb type is flowering the at that time the leaves perishes okay this is a uh, veratrum and uh, fibers fibers are uh, extracted that is yucca uh, then uh, formium tenax uh, yields fibers then resin is obtained from dracaena and uh, sandoroia yield resin here we can see this sandoroia it is also with the secondary thickening uh, from the acrid resins of sandophoria sealing wax is prepared then so many ornamental plants are there for example tulipa tulips lilium gloriosa aloe rascus dracaena asparagus yucca hemerocallis all are used as uh, this uh, uh, with the beautiful flowers uh, even though the flowers are not showy also it is with the beautiful uh, petals and uh, colors even though it is small flowers okay and so this is up to this the family characteristics try to study all these okay and uh, see these beautiful flowers hmm? and try to study about its special characteristics about this is a called chicken autumn nail okay and uh, this is with uh, so many interesting factors some of them are with the uh, secondary thickening reticulate venation is there even though it is coming under monocots hmm? try try to study all the characteristics so this is this is a beautiful lily uh, plant ever experienced 
So actually this, this flower, this uh, photograph and it is the lily of the valley. Botanically it is called as Convaleria majalis, majalis, Convaleria majalis. Actually, suppose anybody is doing research and about this Liliaceae family, according to new classifications, okay, classifications. Now, this asparagus is um, categorized as a separate family, separate subfamily, which is called as Asparagaceae. Hmm? And now, this value of Lily is found under Asparagaceae due to some minor differences. Okay, and it is not uh, um, meant for you, you people. You are uh, you are doing your degree course. That is, uh, it is related to some taxonomic research. Anyway, now you study this particular fam plant is lily of the valley. Botanically, it is called Convaleria majalis. Okay, okay. Thank you. Try to study and ask doubts.